Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I am the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. But am I the lead pastor right now? Because I'm not around. No. I'm no, doing my own thing. I'm no. not going to church. I'm not going to meetings. I'm not going to the elders' meetings. I'm mm-hmm. not talking to people. I'm not meeting with people. Mm. But you're on sabbatical. I'm on sabbatical, yeah. That's fine. So it's okay. Okay. All right. It's all right. And you weren't at church because you are... Well, one, you're you're in Florida. Yep. And you just got back. Yep, just got you back. Make it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wouldn't go anyways. I'd go somewhere else. I would think that's yeah. healthy. Yeah, I sabbatical. Think that's good. It's sabbatical. Yeah. yeah, it's good to kind of check out, be fed mm-hmm. in that way. You know, going going somewhere. If I go there, people are like, hey man, hey listen, I got to talk to you. Got to talk to you. Yeah. Hey, I want to hear. Yeah. Like the, the people are good. I mean, listen, because our people are very uh, friendly. Yeah, they are. They're very friendly. Yeah. So they and they to... idolize me appropriately mm. so because I have all the answers. I don't think there's I any. And I am the perfect I, example I, for all of them. I don't think that so happens. They, no, that's not no. a thing? That's not oh. a thing. Oh, okay. Well, that's not it. All that's right. not it. Never mind then. I mean, we had a members meeting today. Yeah, I know. I wasn't there. I was nervous because I'm not there. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, I'm not wow. there. Oh, wow. You don't think we can handle it? No, you I know don't you think can handle it. No, I know you can handle it. Yeah. I just don't know what's happening. Yeah. So I'm like, oh no. Well, here's the thing. I want you to guess how often we talked about you. I'd like to think that I probably came up a couple of times at least, maybe three times, but max four or five. You know, just because people probably mm. want to just express appreciation for me behind my back. You know, mm. they don't want to, you know, don't want to puff me up when yeah, I'm there. Yeah, right? yeah. So they're probably like, "Hey, mm. man, we just want to say we're so we love Joe. He's a great pastor. Mm. You know, great preacher." Mm. And uh, probably brought it up. They probably wanted to check in. It's like, "Hey, have you gotten any word? How's mm. he doing? Is he feeling yeah. refreshed? Yeah, that kind of a thing." Mm. Oh, there's probably was a thing where they were like talking about, "Hey, let's get him a gift or something." Mm. You know, mm. something like that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. None of that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Uh, that's Zero right. times. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> zero times. Are you telling times. me that I'm not the brand? Are you telling me I am not the brand? <laughs> All you listen, compliments about my hair came up more. Yes. Yeah, you get compliments about your, your hair and also oh, and how I was running the meeting. Yeah, well, I, I know you're going to run that meeting good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's in the me- it, I, I looked oh, at it, Suzanne. I said, Suzanne, put that in the meeting oh, notes. Get the notes, yeah. Yeah, put that in the meeting notes. Someone complimenting me. Mm-hmm. On how I handled this. Let's go, clerk. Yep. Write it down. Write it down. I want in the official mm-hmm. record. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else? People when uh, when you preach, people count how many times you flip your hair with your uh, with your hands. It's a game. Yeah, it's a game it's, that we it's all like, play. It's like it's like you know, it's like it's like little kids like to listen and doodle. Adults like to listen and count hair flips. Mm, you well, know? because it's like you, they get nothing with you. They get zero. Yeah, there's nothing. No. There's zero. Yeah. Will Joe not frown at some point? And that's about it. <laughs> How many horror references is Joe going to make in this service? How many times will he wipe his head with his hand? Oh, yeah. yeah that's about it. Why don't you take a handkerchief? I bring a handkerchief just for that. Mm. I, I like to I, I like to just rub my face. Like but then to, you're touching your Bible and your notes. It yeah. doesn't get like wet. No. So you do this, then you wipe it on sweating. your jeans. Well, if I'm sweating, then yeah, yeah if I'm sweating. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So but usually just, I'm not sweating. Yeah, you know, just get your handkerchief out. I'm all right. I'm all right. All right. How was Florida. Florida was Florida. Florida was so Florida. So we had our family reunion. Yes, yeah, St. Augustine. Every five years, uh, there's, a, there's a reunion. It's put on by an, um, my wife's aunt. And uh, so, you know, family comes in from Germany, her mom and her sisters and uh, and their significant others. And then there's her aunt and her aunt's kids yeah. and grandkids, all that stuff. Did you like, you like St. Augustine, right? I was right about the parking and the driving. Uh, the parking in the historic area of St. Augustine is not fun, but Mm -hmm. there are tons of parking places, uh, lots. They're all 20 bucks, but I found one. Mm. I found one because I, I, I snuck away on my own. Really? Well, there was a beach day. I don't do the beach. Mm. I'm not doing the beach. Mm -hmm. So I snuck away and, uh, I went downtown. I found a cigar shop. The only, there's a bunch of cigar shops, but this one doesn't do anything but cigars. It's a Mm. real cigar Mm. shop. I found 10 bucks, 10 bucks for the day. And uh, yeah, it was really nice. So I used that a few times. Nice. Yeah, I went down there. Nice. No, it was really great. Great. It was a huge house, and uh, and it was like a mansion, I guess, that they had re- re- uh, rented. Yeah, yeah. So we're all there. Big pool, beach, the whole thing. Lots of people. Very cool people. And uh, yeah, we took the kids last night. I took the kids to uh, like one of those haunted tours of St. Augustine. So we walk around. They tell last us last night. Story. The last night. Oh, the of, last. I was like, of our, of our time. I thought you were driving. So no, yeah, yeah. So that would have been Thursday night because we left on Friday. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So no, it was a really good time. The kids had a great time. They were a little nervous, like, how's this gonna be? What's it gonna be like? All had a great time. Good, good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. That's yeah. So you got time to be refreshed. You got yep. time to relax. 
You yep. got time with your family. You got time was, with your extended family. It was really hot. It was really hot out there. You're sitting on the porch, mm. just sweating. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. But anyway, yeah, it was a really good time. Uh, Love the people. And uh, yeah, it was encouraging. So now I'm back. Well, we missed you. I missed chill. you this week. Yeah, so much. Nobody talked about me at the members meeting. <laughs> but hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why don't you take that for a an insult no no for the oh. pro like what, what's mm. the word i'm using yeah for the accomplishment that oh, it is okay that i'm on that i'm not needed no that you've assembled a team uh-huh right with the lord's help you've yeah. trained you've empowered well that's you have shown that's that suggesting this is, quite a bit <laughs> this is a church this is a church that's ran with a plurality mm. and parity among the elders that it can function Listen, and it functions well i know that yes yeah, but i want to feel special I want a little crown or a robe or a mm. scepter. Mm. I want something, mm. you know. You want the mantle? You know, that's a little too much. For me. That's a little too I'm much. Not, you know, I'm not qualified for a mantle, but mm. I feel like maybe, if not a scepter, maybe a wand. You know? A wand? A magic wand or something. I don't know. I feel like, I, feel like I need something. Mm. Otherwise, I'm just standing there. Not a lot going on. Well, we we miss you. Yeah, <laughs> in spirit. No, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm super. I, that's why I love our church. It, it's, it's actually been really encouraging to know because when you start a church, it, it, things are pretty dicey early on. In that you're very small in number, you don't have a ton of leadership, and and everything if, does go through the lead. Yeah, so the guy that's doing all the preaching, you know, in a, at the beginning stages, it, it really he's holding a lot of it together just yeah. by virtue of being the face that they yep. all see, the voice that yep. they all hear. Yep. Uh, but now we have no worries about that. I could check out. I'm thinking about it. I just check out today. Might move down to Florida. Liked it so much down there. You know, I literally mm. I love. I love humidity and alligators. It's mm. my favorite stuff. Oh, I thought you were gonna do your little thing where it's like, you know, I checked out this church and I just fell in love. I see like it's me, and, and I can just see myself moving and being a part of it. Oh yeah, because we're just so similar. I love that church. You do that with every single place we go to. I've never, I've never once said that I could see myself there. I've never once said that I want to go there. Wellington. Nope, never said that. <gasps> I, only thing I've ever said is those people are awesome. They're like our people. And wow. if I lived there, that's where I would go wow. to church. Wellington? Yep. But I've never said I would go, like I want to leave. Was it, it was Oregon? Texas. Texas, see, you're already mm -hmm. remembering. Yeah, now but, that, but I've Florida. never said, you're saying like, oh, I've talked about I think, leaving. I think you said it from like never. South Carolina. Never, never, ever <laughs> said about leaving. Tennessee? No. Kentucky? Nope, never. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope. You know, but you know, that, that, that church in Florida though. They they did offer me uh, a scepter. So oh, I mean, did yeah, they? No, I mean, I'm no, just saying you guys might need to uh, match that. Uh, I I I can give you a toothpick. Okay, well, that's about in my hand. In it your looks hand, like a that looks like a scepter, yeah, right? Yeah, like, especially if you put like an olive on top. Oh, you know. Can you? Can you? Are you gonna with, be able to with hold both, it with both hands? Okay. Yeah. Right, no, right. I, it's like a it's like a claymore uh, sword when I hold <laughs> it. It's a, I can't be wielding that thing around by myself with one hand. No, I man. I'm glad to be back, and I've got a few more weeks, a couple more week, week two and a half weeks left. Uh, to just hang out with the fam, and I'm doing some writing, and uh, yeah. Nice, yeah, it's, nice, uh, exciting, yeah. exciting. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. And uh, while I was there, oh, while I was in Florida, um, you know, I, I just kind of default in my mind, like, oh, these are all Christians because there's so many Christians in the family, but it turns out well, not everybody there was Christian. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so uh, I, had a, I had a long conversation uh, with a husband and a wife that, uh, that, that, are, that aren't Christian. And uh, great people had a great conversation and uh, lots of questions and whatnot. And so I, I was thinking in light of that evangelistic sort of discussion that uh, that we could talk about evangelism again. It's been a while. It's and, been a while. It's uh, been a minute. Yeah, that we could get back into it. Okay. All right. Well, when we talk about evangelism, Joe, mm -hmm. like there's lots of different methods and mm -hmm. and e e wait what e e evangelism explosion. What is that e e? I think we've talked about this. Yeah, evangelism. That was like. Uh, Oh man, what was his name? The Presbyterian guy. Uh, he always he always preached Jesus and America. I forget his name now. I'm drawing a blank <laughs> on his name. But he was at uh, like Cape Coral Church in okay. Florida. Anyway, um, he he had he created evangelism explosion, which was really popular and used a lot. It was the whole like it was a whole system, but it was the diagnostic question: if you were to die tonight and stand before God, mm. and He were to ask you, "Why should I let you into my heaven?" Mm. What would you say to him? And that mm. kind of sets up things for a conversation. A lot of people use EE. -E. Okay. That you were not taught EE. -E. No, I remember that question though. Yeah. I remember that question. That, that I didn't, became. I, didn't, I don't, I, yeah. I don't remember if that's, I don't think I've ever heard it called EE. -E. Yeah. I, we I've were heard, in Canada. You were up in Canada 
during those years of your life when you really would have been like getting deep into evangelism oh. and strategies because you were doing youth ministry and all that stuff up there mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. down here so you were like it, smoking yeah. weed and stuff in america or yeah, whatever so, uh, for us it was more relational evangelism oh yes more okay. relational not weed not weed oh, okay not weed i don't know not weed. Weed. uh but i've heard people talk about the four spiritual laws god loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life Jimmy. oh that's right that's right so when you say the four spiritual laws, what are those three? What are those four laws? I don't even fucking remember. God loves you and has, oh, I have to look it up. That's uh, what I was trying to find, right. to be honest. Four spiritual laws. Now, this comes from Bill Bright and um, a Campus Crusade for Christ, which is now just called, oh, okay. God loves you. Oh, they've changed it. Because it it was a little it was a little like God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Mm. That doesn't really work when you when you really start thinking about it. Okay, okay. What do you mean by that? Now it's God loves you and created you to know him personally. Ah, okay. All right. Number two, we are sinful and separated from God. Therefore, we cannot know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. Uh, that's good. That's good. Number three, Jesus Christ is God is God's only provision for man's sin. Through Him alone, we can know God personally and experience God's love. And then He died in our place and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, four, we must individually receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Then we can know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. All right. So faith, repentance. But here's the thing: Could, if you scroll down, we're probably on two different pages. Yeah. If you scroll down, do you see the self-directed life? No. All right. So in the Bill Bright Four Spiritual Laws model, as, after they do that thing. They give you two circles. One is the self-directed life and one is the Christ-centered life. And in the self-directed life, self is on the throne. Jesus, the cross, is outside of the circle. And all the dots representing the various interests in your life are just in chaos. All right? Mm -hmm. So um, the, the Christ-centered life, Jesus is on the throne. Self is submitted in the circle mm -hmm. to the throne. Mm -hmm. And everything is yielded perfectly to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Little, little... So, so do people like people would go through that with others? Oh yeah, they walk. Yeah, it's a whole part of it. Yeah, that's like a whole part of the the thing. All right. So then there's a prayer. There's a prayer to do. Yep. And then did you pray this prayer? You, you I'm click, gonna click. click I'm gonna click yes. yes. Click yes. Yes, I prayed this prayer. Congratulations on your decision to accept Christ. <laughs> we would like to send you information. Oh, and uh, there's a broken link. <laughs> <laughs> so you did not use the four spiritual laws up there in Canada. No, 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 no. But I, I yeah, uh, they talked about the Romans road, though. Yeah, that's everybody. I don't even know where that came from. That's been around forever. And the Romans road, just a, numbers of sequential verses in the book of Romans that take you through sin, grace, Christ, all that. Right. Are they all sequential? Yeah, yeah they go because well, it starts like, OK, Romans 310. No one is perfect. Yeah. Right. Romans 323. Everyone sins mm -hmm. and falls short of the glory of God. Romans 623. Uh, or Romans 59. Oh, well, see, OK, 59. Christ took our sins. Mm -hmm. 623. The wages of, wait, sin is death, but Jesus is life. Yep. Romans 10, 9, confess and believe yep. to be saved. Mm -hmm. And then there's Romans 8, 1, people in Christ will be free. Yeah, yeah mostly sequential. Mostly sequential. Yeah, That's why go. I was like, eh. Yeah, but it's, it's good, helpful verses to kind of guide people through when you're yeah. sharing the gospel. Yeah. All right. Yeah, which, which one were you taught? All of them? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I got was converted in 1990. And so uh, I got some EE. I got the four spiritual laws. Of course, they taught me the Romans road. Road. There was the Evangel cube, which uh, what I, is that? It's like a it's like a it's like a big unfolding cube that you use. Uh, Google, Google Evangel cube. I, I I just that, that at that point I was like, nah, I can't. That's just too much. Then there were the bracelets, the colored bracelets. Oh, I've seen those. Yep. And then like you know, the, well, here's the thing: in all the people that I talked to. They're down for a conversation. What they're not down for, it used to go, okay, see the red bead? See the black the black bead is sin, or the white bead is holiness. And it's like they don't they that's like, you know, come on. I mean, it's the cube little... is creative. Well, sure. Satan creates a, things too, no, Jimmy. I, I, you know, lots of beads. I'm just looking at it, I'm like, I'm like, eh, it's creative. It's you know. You know, Balfagor is a very creative metal band. I don't listen to them though, because they're <laughs> satanic. <laughs> I'm you know, not I'm saying just... the Avenger Cube is satanic. No, no, no. But no, I mean I don't know what I what I was taught. I mean, it, so when I came to faith, Sun Life Ministries, remember them? Yeah, they were they were still it was cult. So, no, no, what? what? No, 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 no. I don't know. Uh, it was it was quite big around here, and so yeah, I would a lot of their resources. It was a lot more relational yeah, aspect yeah. of evangelism, right? Yeah, suddenly they had one in Elburn, right? Didn't they have a Sun Life Center? Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So yeah, it was a very much more relational mm -hmm. aspect to it, uh, reaching out, having conversations. You know, not just with with street evangelism, but yeah. like with your peers, with your friends, mm -hmm. with your family. 
uh, very much like here's how you kind of they would give like jumping off points for conversations. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like there's because there's different approaches, right? Like whether you're using EE or you've 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 learned like a scripture or whatever it is. But even then you're like, OK, some people go door to door. Some people do what they call confrontational evangelism, which is the wrong word for it. But they just means that they will talk to strangers that they don't know and they'll get right to it. Well, right? that's what we did. We, uh, there was a Sun Life had a uh, like a retreat or a conference over at Moody. Mm -hmm. And remember, it was 97, 98, something like that. And so yeah, we, I was married. So we were down. Okay. Congrats. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying like you were like, you were like five or something then. I, uh, I, I was in high school. Okay. I was in high school. Go, yeah. And so, yeah, we stayed on campus and then would go walk the lakefront and yeah, do the, yep. and do yeah, evangelize. I did, uh, I did evangelism, street evangelism, uh, uh, for a semester or two. Uh, I did, I did it with Jen. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and a few other people. Yeah. But like, you know, I was like, I was hanging out with Jen, you know? And uh, one time I walked up to this guy, and I uh, started talking to him. It's this big dude, big dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's what he said to me. I love punching white boys in the face. Oh, cool. And I was like, I was like, oh yeah, big dude. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, why is that? And he goes, I like to see the red blood run <laughs> down mm. your white face. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, well, that doesn't sound cool. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what that's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, and I go, so you don't want to talk? And he's like, nah. And I'm like, all right, cool, man. I'm just. Don't punch me in the face. That, know, would be, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. You could have just said, hey, guy, I'm good. What I said was like, yeah, take your shot, punk. Yeah, that sounds like you. No, I did not say that. I know you didn't I say got, that. I just got I was like, I don't want to bother you. Did or you, get punched in the face. You cried a little bit, though? No. Did no, you I've been up? punched in the face a number of times. <laughs> it's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't, it wouldn't be like a shocker. Oh, yeah, my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, a lot of people have been taught their systems and different you know emphasis and uh things that go on but i mean really when we talk about these things i mean they're models and they're tools because listen joe it's not just the pastoral staff it's not just the elders that are called to evangelism right yeah i i i would say depending on how you define it that we're all responsible to evangelize or to share the gospel to testify to christ uh, in one way or another, all Christians are responsible to, to yeah. do that. And, yeah. I, and that's that that has been, I think, the Christian position throughout the ages. Um, you know, when thoughtful Christians and leaders uh, and churches have always recognized, like, we all bear witness. We, yeah. We're all given the opportunity in different yeah. ways. Yep, yep. You know, some people are, are more introverted and some people are more extroverted. Um, but we are all we all have that privilege and responsibility to tell other people when God gives us the opportunity um, about Jesus. And, and, you know, when you, when you read scripture, you, you see not only the example of Jesus speaking to the disciples and then to the 70, uh, you know, to the church at large, you will be my witnesses mm, in Jerusalem, mm -hmm, Judea mm -hmm, and Samaria. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, you have like first Peter three fifteen. but in your hearts, honor Christ, the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the yes. hope that is in you yet by the way, everybody, yet do it with gentleness what? and respect. What? Mm. Oh. Hmm. So like just like yelling at people that they're going to burn in hell. True. Yeah. Maybe, but mm. not done with gentleness and respect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got to tell people the truth. Yeah. But with gentleness. So along that then, like that you're, you're kind of hinting at this, like let's define evangelism. Right. Right. Let's define evangelism. Because a lot of us preach something, yeah. We, you know, some of us believe we're preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Yep. Some of us preach politics. Yep. You know, we preach, you know, things that we are passionate mm -hmm. about. But when we're talking about evangelism, you know, we're talking about uh, presenting the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ mm, to a news. fallen world mm -hmm. uh, that. So that because we don't know, we, we preach the gospel to everyone indiscriminately, indiscriminately because the Holy Spirit works on their heart and uses that as a means to redeem. It, it's interesting because clearly, and I think we all know this, we, maybe we don't want to recognize it in ourselves at times or in some of the people that we like, but, uh, but you, you've, you've seen hellfire preachers and hellfire preachers. Uh, I'm sure there are good and bad examples, but what I'm talking about are those people who simply proclaim wrath. We are not Jonah. 
right? Where mm. we're just going reluctantly to tell people your God's judgment is coming. We are bearers of good news. Yeah. And so the good news, of course, is set against the backdrop of the bad news that yes, yep. wrath is yep. coming. Yes. But God loves sinners. Yes. So like that's what's so crazy, right? Is that, you know, to evangelism is, like you said, a heralding of good news. That though we deserve death and judgment, God loves sinners and 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 has worked for our redemption in Jesus Christ, His Son. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I like I like this idea that we're, we're we we are heralding, proclaiming, rejoicing in this good news that saved me and can save anybody else. Mm-hmm. I, oh I, yes, it, it's like this. But like sometimes, how it's sweet just like, was the gospel when you heard it? Right? Like mm-hmm. I mean, not right away. At least for me, right? Not right away. It was intriguing. Yeah. It was intriguing. It felt as I was hearing it, it it seemed inconsistent in some ways. At least inconsistent, not that the gospel was inconsistent, but my experience with what church had taught. Now I know that you know a lot of things. Oh, but here what we go. you don't know is what we're gonna talk about on Tuesday's episode. I haven't told you this. You don't even no. know what we're gonna talk about. No, I don't know. We're going to talk about our testimonies. We're going to talk about how we came to faith in Christ and like what were the things, the mm. precursors, the way God kind of So you don't want me to do that now. So I got to, got to, got to save it. All right. Got to right. save well, it. I'm but, just going to say, but what, when the Holy Spirit yep. opened my eyes, mm-hmm. it was sweet. I tell you what, when I heard the gospel for the first time, I was 17. How old were you? You were junior high or high school? Uh, high school. High school. Uh, that's when it started making sense. I would say I heard it before that. Maybe started to hear it, but it started to click, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So like when I heard it, I was like, okay interesting and then it became attractive still mm. didn't believe it but i was like mm, not bad god loves sinners that's kind of that's kind of dope mm-hmm. that's kind of cool mm-hmm. that's pretty it's pretty big and then it became sort of magnificent mm-hmm. but i still didn't believe mm. yeah we'll talk about it all right all right all right so yeah, we're, like it's good news though like that's what we're called like we should be people of good news man like yeah. you yell like listen <laughs> sometimes you got to yell at people right in in life like, so like, hey, listen, if uh, when there's injustice, you go, hey, dummies, yeah, knock it off. Stop it. Stop oppressing. That's stupid. That's evil. That's wicked. There's a place for that. But our message, our fundamental message is the gospel, which is good news. Mm. That's what we should be known for more than anything else. And we want to be encouraging people to engage in, evan- in yeah, evangelism, yeah. right? Yeah. Whether, whether you are in leadership at a church or just even with your peers, with your neighbors, like with your friends, how is it that as a group of believers... How do we yeah. encourage each other to engage in evangelism? We got there's four ways here. This is not exclusive. No, we got these are four ways that we're thinking through these things. Yeah, and because it's like there are there are there are a hundred probably, right? I'm sure there's lots. But yeah. uh, but I know when 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 we start to think about it, these are things that come to the front, and one of them is to go deeper in the word, to grow theologically, and to become a better teacher or preacher of the word. We need good tools and the right library. For those who want to go deep and grow with the best resources, we recommend Logos Bible Software. Logos fuses powerful technology with biblical resources. Access Bibles, search tools, commentary, seminary-level courses, and even audiobooks right on your phone, tablet, or desktop. Logos offers nearly 200,000 digital books from the world's top publishers. Logos editions have been turbocharged with powerful data that connect them with the rest of your library. So whether you're comparing Bible translations, tackling tough topics, or studying deep theological issues, Logos has you covered. You can go on to digging into the original language resources, even if you don't know Greek or Hebrew. Logos will even help you pronounce the words. Now, Listen, we could list all of the scholars that they want us to point to who are using Logos, but honestly, we use Logos Bible software. I just asked Jimmy the other day, how many days a week do you use Logos? And he said, at least seven. I mean, I use them every day of the week, multiple times a day, and so do I. I use it for sermon prep. I use it for research. I use it for writing uh, new books that I'm working on and personal devotions. Now you can get started with Logos today for under $50. Go to logos.com slash jofo. For under 50 bucks, you can get started today. Hit up logos.com slash jofo. Just look for the opportunity to share wherever you are. Because... You know, and again, an opportunity for me is different than an opportunity for my daughter, Catherine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, a, I'm a talker and, oh, uh, you are an uh, overshare. I'm a, I will overshare. The, oh, should I not overshare the God? Can I overshare the gospel, Jimmy? Um, no. Okay. So there, fine. 
I nope. just won. Yeah, no, in that round. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish that was the only place you overshared, though. Oh, it's not. It's not the oh. only place for you. Well, well, I overshare, you know, everywhere. Not a lot of things. everything. Most things. All things. All the time. Every time. <laughs> All the times. All every of the times. Every of the times I tend to share too much. Yeah. That's why that's why uh, I'm kept on a short leash. Um, but no, look for the opportunities where you are. So that just means like be aware. If you're if you're if you're having a conversation with somebody and they're starting to ask questions or you're you're starting to near these subjects that relate to God, the gospel, eternity, spiritual life, sin, guilt, like you have to have some sort of theological biblical rubric by which you understand the world. And when people are having conversations with you, that you're comfortable enough, if you're if you're comfor- comfortable enough to have a conversation with somebody, then you should be able to have a gospel conversation with them. Yeah. If, you, if you're not able to have a conversation with them at all, then I wouldn't expect you to start evangelizing Mm -hmm. so that's why it's like okay on the bus if you're if you're in the midst of a comfortable conversation it's worth making it a little uncomfortable to talk about the things that really matter yes so look for the opportunities because like you'd be surprised if this bus crashed right now yeah and you were in heaven or stand before your maker if you were in hell and the devil was like ha ha sucker that's not a thing I don't. I'm gonna say I've never heard this. <laughs> All right. So Joe's saying, look for the opportunity wherever you are. Mm-hmm. Number two, listen to understand. Don't just listen to rebut. <laughs> to get I'm just waiting for them to shut up. Just wait. Uh, I got my I'm answer. Ready. I got uh, 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 ha Like yeah. gotcha. Mm-hmm. You know. Like no, no, no. Actually, listen to understand where they're coming from. Why is it important to understand what they think? where they're coming from. Why is it important to, uh, to understand it? And even to a certain degree, be empathetic with how they're viewing things. Well, I think one, it shows you actually care, right? Yes. That you're actually invested in the conversation, in this relationship. Mm-hmm. I think it, 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 even if that relationship is short lived, even if this is only a 20 minute bus ride, you at least show the individual themselves matters, mm-hmm. not just it, it, the individual matters to God. Yep. And, the individual matters to you. You're not a salesperson just trying to get a sale. This is you're yeah. This is not a used car salesman. You're not just like uh, tr- it's it's not a, a numbers issue, right? Like how many numbers do I get through today? How yeah. many people can I talk to? Because if I talk to a hundred people, maybe five yeah. will. You know what I mean? So it's a numbers game to try to figure yeah, it out. Yeah. But to actually understand shows that you truly care about them and that what you're saying to them as is actually important. Right. It shows that it's actually important to you. Because you do care about what happens to them and you want to mm. understand what's going on. And that, so secondly as well, um, then you're actually able to have a more direct conversation on where they're at. Yeah. You're not just like, uh, what's the word? Like firing into the wind. Yeah. Right. It's a much more targeted conversation because they might, I mean, listen, when I, when I understand that who I'm talking to was raised Catholic how I go about evangelism is different. Yeah, right. Talking to a Muslim, an atheist, a nun, yep. right? A former a former religious person. Yeah. It's all going to change all how you changes. approach it. How I approach the conversation that we have, it's all going to change based upon where they're at. Because they have certain preconceived ideas, certain yes. presuppositions. Yes. They have certain roadblocks. Yes. Or um, uh, strongholds that Paul talks about, mm. right? These thoughts that are exalted above Christ. Yeah. And so now we know what, so I it, saw it, so at, at, the, at the family reunion, I was talking to two, uh, two people, really great people. And um, although uh, the guy, the husband was dogging my daughter about her veganism a bit, <laughs> which is <was> funny. <laughs> I like watch Catherine, like what's she gonna say? Catherine's just like, I mean, okay. we're gonna have a salad for her tomorrow night. So what's tomorrow night? Soldier and leaders. Actually, she hasn't signed up. Oh yeah, she's been gone. I know, so, but just in case, but I'm just saying, yeah. we, we, so, made, we made plan to okay. have a salad No, just no for cheese her. on that she's vegan. She's not just vegetarian. Oh, I better let Michelle know. No cheese, no dairy. What Am I just going to give her lettuce? Lettuce, veggies. Okay, that's if she can make it tomorrow. If she, she can make it. Yeah. She might, if she's working. Now, yeah, then I would say. So, um, so I was talking to them, and uh, and somehow we, we, we got into this this whole thing. And they were like, oh, we're, we're not Christian. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm so sorry. I, you know, I, I actually just sort of defaulted to like, oh, everybody's on the same page, and that's not fair of me to do. No. You know, and they're like, oh, no, it's okay. <clears throat> um, and I guess, I guess uh, they're, uh, you know, the, the patriarch of the family, Michael, they said like, well, he kind of fer- refers to us as pre-Christian. Like we're going to, the, he's like, we're going to be Christian soon. Like he, <laughs> if he has anything to do about it. So they were really cool, but they had a lot of questions and, you know, they were saying, well, here are the things that we have come to read and think through. And they started like painting, began to paint a picture. And so I was really interested to know like, okay, so what are your hangups? 
Um, and it's not just so that I can fire back with an answer. It's so that, A, I want to understand you. I care about you. I want to respect you because I want you to respect what I, where I'm coming from. And they certainly did. And so it was, there was a lot of listening and listening to understand. And in the end, I think it was a really good, it was a long conversation out on the porch. Um, and I, it was, it was really good because then at the end they're like, you know what you've, they, they were saying like, because of your background, you've thought through this thought through some of the things that some other Christians haven't had to think through mm. in a different way. And actually just taking the time to listen and understand and then respond was uh, from kind of like where I'm at, like not just firing verses, which obviously I did share scripture, but uh, it was, it was a, just a good conversation. I think that's a good point. Mm. Now what about number three? So one of the things that, that we, we believe in is mm. you want to share what you believe in. Yeah. Okay. Just me, not Jimmy, uh, is that you should share, share scripture and it's truths more than just your own story. No, I believe this too, guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, you share your story. Absolutely. Share your story because that makes it personal. It makes it real. Uh, but everybody has a story. Every religion has a story. Joseph Smith had a story. Uh, what's his name? The tiny actor. He's, he's almost as short as Owen Strand. What's his name? He's I, in all the Mission Impossible movies. Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise has a story, that, and he would say, like, oh, man, Scientology saved my life, changed my life. Mm, mm-hmm. So, like, everybody has a story. Your story, in and of itself, is not super compelling. It's, it's good. It's helpful. It's a compliment to the truths and to the Scripture that we share. But God uses Scripture and the truths of Scripture to change people. So just make sure. Yeah, tell your story, but make sure that you're sharing Scripture. And you don't have to share tons and tons of scripture. Uh, but like, you know, I, I was explaining to this couple at the reunion, like, you know, because they were talking about different religions and whatnot. And I said, one of the things that I've always been uh, keen to do is to ask those, those big questions of any religion or worldview. Like, okay, so the four questions are, where did we come from? Like, what, just like, what's your answer for where we ultimately came from? And just let's put them up side by side. How do they compare? Right mm-hmm. now, this is this doesn't mean one is true and one's false, but I just like to know, like, what do you think? Right. And so, I, and then the, the second one is like, well, what went wrong? Because clearly something's wrong. We have death, we have evil, we have, you know, we have child uh, kidnappers, like all yeah. these things. Yeah, yeah. What went wrong? What's the answer for that? And now, is there redemption? Like what's, what's the redeeming truth? Is there some way that we can have a set salvation from what's wrong? And then where are we going ultimately? So I was like, those four things help us to kind of, you know, and as soon as you begin to engage on those levels, you're like, okay, well, here's what the Bible says about where we came from. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and we actually went there, you know, we actually went there and said, well, scripture says that however he did it, God is the one who created the heavens and the earth. And mm-hmm. by virtue of us being his creation, we are all accountable to him. So I like the idea of, of sharing scripture and it's true more yes. than our story. Not not to say you don't share your story. Do that. And number four, do not spend too much time on secondary issues. The gospel is not about the culture wars, right? <laughs> it, it's just, it's not. It's not. The gospel is the good COVID. news. COVID! <laughs> the, the gospel Biden. is the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> Stop. You can't. Okay. You but know like, what I'm just saying. But no, so here's the thing, though. I mean, I'm not to say... This is not what I'm saying. I do believe that the gospel changes individuals. Yep. And yes, that is reflected culturally. Sure. Absolutely. And those and those those secondary issues they're not unimportant. They're not exactly. So when we say secondary, but they are secondary to the gospel. Yeah. The good news is always first. The well, good news is man. always the priority. My mom my mom kept getting hung up on evolution. Kept getting hung up on evolution. And she'd be like, so wait a minute, you're saying if I were to become a Christian, I can't believe in evolution anymore. And I go, first of all, th- th- that's not what I'm saying. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is that you're a sinner. <laughs> I can't yeah. go back because she wanted to make the secondary issue the, the primary issue. Mm-hmm. And I said, listen, uh, here's what I think happens. I think, I think when you, you come to understand what the Bible says about God and yourself and the gospel uh, and you believe, I think you, you will then implicitly want to trust and understand what scripture says and that's going to inform all these other issues mm, for you mm-hmm. um and or, or abortion she kept saying like you're saying like i can't believe in abortion if uh if i become a christian and of course i'd be like well it would be inconsistent to to be for the murder of innocent children and follow jesus like mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's an inconsistent because that's an evil thing but i kept saying like well listen that's like the, the issue is not your view on abortion right now that might be an issue that it certainly is an issue that we need to deal with mm-hmm. but the fundamental issue is where you stand before god and what the what the cure is for your sin problem 
So yeah, and I just, and here's the thing. She became a Christian and suddenly she just didn't care about evolution anymore. Mm -hmm. And she became very much uh, against the idea, the concept of abortion. She's like, no, I can see that it's murder. Yeah, it's, it, and, and by the way, but my mother actually gave up one of her children for adoption. My mom had her first kid when she was 15. Mm. And then uh, there's my brother, Darren, and then Michelle, she's a member of our church. Uh, and then she got divorced from her husband, Jim, and then found another guy named Jim, because that's how my mom is. She wanted you know, to keep it consistent. Can we, you know. can make found, it easy? She found another Jim, another short <laughs> guy named Jim. Same last name? Yeah. No, different last name. <laughs> Though my grandma married a guy, her, her second husband had the same last name. It was weird. Anyway. Huh. Hmm. So, um, but she married him, and then they had me. But in between me, she had another child. So she's, at that point, single mom, cocktail waitress, raising two kids, all by herself. She had another kid. She's like, I, I can't. So she, she didn't get an abortion. She put it up for adoption. Which was a great thing. It was a great thing, really hard thing. And we actually uh, just met this person. Uh, you never told me this. Nah. Like, yeah. What is wrong with yeah. you? Well, I didn't meet her, but she, she contacted us through social media. She got, she got to talk to mom and dad and everything and all that. So, yeah. Yeah. How is it that you never told me that? I don't know. I thought I was an overshare, Jimmy. I thought I was always oversharing, too much oversharing. I guess you, know you were proved you know, wrong no, no, again. No, no, no. You know there's a difference in what it, you know there's a difference. Well, How dare know, you? What did you say? How dare you? Uh, how, how dare I what? No, I no, didn't no, share no, something. No, 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 you said I'm an overshare. No, no. In all seriousness. Yeah. There's not podcast banter. No, I, like I don't. This. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a little hurt. I'm a little well, offended. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not laughing. It, was, you know? it, was, it wasn't. It, it didn't register very big for me. <laughs> it, it didn't. I'm just saying like I didn't share because it didn't register I, I, very I, big I, for I, me. Listen. I don't know this person. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take your apology. Oh, I'm not apologizing. I didn't say like, it, was, it was cool. I, I'll take your apology for not. Yeah. No. No, go ahead. It's fine. Yeah. You, your problem right now is you're focusing on secondary issues, Jimmy. And we need to focus on the, the primary issue. I want you to know I forgive you. <laughs> Thank you. Despite despite your despite, hardness of heart here. I don't know. I just... Uh, I forgive you. You know. Yeah. yeah Dang, I, I, dude. I, I, I told you. You just don't remember. Now you're calling my character to I'm question? Just saying, no, I'm saying... No, not character. You forgot. You, you forget things sometimes. You know, you've called people's character into question. Now I understand. I'm not calling your character into question. I'm just saying you forgot. That's Forgetting stuff... Is, I'm not calling Joe Biden's character first into question all, when he can't remember stuff. All right, hold on. First of all, first of all, first of all, you know that's something I would never forget. Well, apparently you did because I totally told you about it in great detail, too. It's weird, too, because I was all excited and everything. I got weepy and you were you, like, oh, yeah, you were busy. I think you were like, yeah, yeah, I'm, busy. I'm doing like fantasy football or something. You weren't, you weren't really. I haven't done fantasy football in like <laughs> seven years. That's probably when I shared it. <laughs> seven years ago? I don't remember. Anyways, point is, it's like, yeah, I, yeah, don't, don't spend. I, I like that. Don't I spend too much time on secondary issues. All right, so let, let's do this. Um, should we share a, par a part of our life that we're gonna do it on air and? Oh, listen, okay, so I, I did that with the cancer thing. <gasps> I did that with the cancer thing. This I didn't share the cancer you've thing. Done this to and me. now, like the, the 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 little girl that my 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 mom gave up for adoption is I'm is alive and well, and she looks like a thorn. You know, she looks like one of us. And uh, but I haven't really talked to her. I haven't personally talked. Okay, to her. I but seen still, I mean, like that, that was you know. you know what I mean. That was yeah. Could have yeah. been. Could have said, "Hey, dude, like pray for this. Like this is encouraging. I don't know where it's gonna go, but you know, it's it's my it's, yeah. it's my sister. Hey, hey, listen, pray for that. Uh, my half sister, half sister. This is my half sister. Yeah. Yeah, half sister. I only have half sisters and half brothers. So I know that's what they don't really count. Ha like you know, Joey, they stop. Don't count. Michelle's a half stop. sister. Stop. Hey, Michelle, if you're listening, I know. Stop. Just you need to know. No. If stop. you were a full sister. I'd, what like, I'd like you more. What is wrong with well, that's you? That's how it is. Are we adopted into God's family as half, as half siblings or something? <laughs> We're not half brothers and sisters, are we, in the kingdom of God? Uh, We're full. I mean, I just love the fact that Michelle knows you're full of it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I love the fact that I know like she's she would hear that and be like, oh, Joey. Yeah. I could just hear her, Joey. I love my sister. Mm -hmm. My brother, Darren. Huh? But my sister, Michelle. Dave's dad. So, you know, he's gone. Wait, what? Your brother died? <laughs> I know I told you about that. He OD'd. I know I told you that. <laughs> you're so happy. <laughs> well, I'm not happy. But oh, no, not that he died. Yeah. You're happy that you you. Like, All right, let's talk about categories. Right. This, it's this getting is getting long. It's this, getting well, long. And not only that, it's taking like a bit of a darker turn. <laughs> okay, so it's, so I'm gonna overshare, but I don't have any feelings. That, that's what we've learned. Okay. Um, all right. So here's what, here's what we do. Here, we encourage people. Mark Dever, pastor of Capitol Hill Baptist Church. Great guy. Big giant brain. Box head. Love that guy. He has um, basically said that uh, a simple way to remember uh, the a, a way of sharing the gospel is to think of four categories. God, man, Christ, response. 
Okay. Right? God, now, man, Christ responds. Keep those four categories in mind, and you're able to communicate the gospel. Now, but, are, these, are these just the main points that you're supposed to hit? No, it's not It's not so much that like this is an outline that you follow, though you, you sort of could. It's more that if you're going to share the gospel, people have to have a proper understanding of who God is, who we are, who Christ is, and how we're supposed to respond to all that Christ did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I we, agree like, with that. Like, for example, uh, like take God, for example. Like, I'm, I'm talking to people about God. Most people believe in a concept of God, some kind of God or gods. So what we want to do is we want to share what the Bible says about God. For example, he is the creator of all things, right? He Mm. is the author of all things. He is holy. He is perfect. He is pure. He is just. He is good. And it might depend like what you're like, where you go with your explanation of who God is uh, might depend on where they're at. Mm. Right. So like, for example, if they're coming from a particular religious perspective that understand that they already know, like, no, I think God's sovereign, but they don't really understand that God is loving. Right. That he's gracious and yeah. good. So that yeah. you want to you want to dial in there. Yep. Um, if they understand that he's creator, but that he is like removed and distant, then you want to talk about, oh, he's a God of providence. He's involved mm. in your life. Mm-hmm. He's involved in the details. Mm-hmm. So like at, be again, to be an evangelist, you, you have to be a theologian. Every Christian is a theologian. So you want to be the best theologian you can be. That's right. So God is a good category. You, you, you've got to have some some scripture in mind, some things to talk about. It's not about like, oh, I have four verses that I use. It's you just want to be familiar enough with what the scripture says about God so that you can begin to dialogue with people. And going along those categories, secondly, man, right? Uh, what does it mean to be created in God's image? Yeah. Right? Uh, that's a big one. That's a big Always one. comes up. Always, Always comes, comes up. up. Very important. And then, so then what does it mean to have a sinful nature? Mm. What does it mean to be accountable to our creator? Yeah. Right? If God is creator mm-hmm. and he created us, that means we are accountable to our creator. Yeah. No, right? I, I, I love that. that. That's key, right? And that we were made for God's glory. I was just, uh, I was in uh, Ecclesiastes in my devotional time. And uh, you know, the first like 11 verses, well, like most of it is like, yeah, the world sucks. It's broken. Yeah, I was about to say, that's a really good it's, place to be. It, it's vanity on my yep. sabbatical. On your sabbatical. Yeah. But this but, is refreshing. The, the, but the point is, is that like you don't you can't live for the world. The world is worth redeeming. God does that. People are worth loving. But. Like you don't derive your identity or your value or your purpose from the world. You can't, Mm. but you can from God, right? We're made in his image. We're accountable to him. We're made for his glory. Like all of that is really big. So you can see like as you're dialoguing with people, depending on where they're at, understanding who God is and understanding who we are, like you might need to spend some time. And I actually wind up having to spend a lot of time on Imago Day all in almost every evangelistic encounter. Yeah. Because people are like, people are frustrated about sin in the world, racism, oppression or whatever. Or they think that they're, some people just think that they're worthless. Like, oh, I've, I've screwed up my life so bad. And I'm like, you're made in God's image. Mm, and God, mm. God, you know, so that's really big. Um, Christ, God, man, Christ. So ultimately we want to get to like the solution, right? So we have God creator. Where did we come from? Man, what, what went wrong, right? God made us in his image, but we have sinned. Uh, Christ is God's answer. The son of God. What do you know about Jesus? Right? He's the son of God. He's God in the flesh. I mean, you don't have to go hypostatic union, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, one person, two natures, human nature, divine nature. Um, but you have to you have to be able to explain to people that this is God in the flesh. And in Jesus, we see the love of God. We see substitution. Yep. Uh, his life where he fulfilled all righteousness, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. But also like how he is the perfect human right we, we see what perfect humanity looks like in him hmm. uh but salvation like that's where you really get to the crux of like how god redeems us in in jesus and then finally response right that this is an invitation to all mm. right and that invitation is an inv- invitation to faith yeah believe yeah, yeah not just believe but repent yeah, yeah repent of your sins turn uh, from your sins to christ himself right and that this is you know applied to you specifically yeah yeah, well, th- th- this is what's interesting. Like, um, like uh, Banana Man, uh, Ray Comfort, he has the whole like uh, way of the master approach to evangelism, and and the good part of that is is he he focuses on law to go like, okay, have you ever told a lie? Of mm-hmm. course you have. What does that make you? Well, it makes you a liar, doesn't it? Have you ever stole anything? Yeah, you probably have. Well, it makes you a thief, right? And so, and then he goes on to say like, we're all sinners, yeah, and because of that, we've all fall short of the glory of God, and we are 
on the wrong side of God's justice because of it. And so the, this, this invitation to all people is not like an invitation to you because you're really in a bad situation. It's an invitation to everybody because we're all in the same situation. Mm. I exactly. love that. And then applying sins, like you said, apply it specifically. Like that's when you have a relationship where you can say like, listen, I know your burden is this. Yeah. I know yes. like, my guilt, my guilt for the things that I had done were destroying me. They were eating me alive and I wanted redemption. By the way, in my conversation with this couple at the family reunion, that was one of the things is like I said, like I haven't found uh, a suitable answer to the problem of guilt in any other religion. I've no. looked. I, I, but I do find it in Jesus. I do find it here yep. that our guilt is taken away. God's justice is satisfied. All of it is taken care of uh, in Christ. And so the response is a response to believe in Christ in the context of our, not just sin in general, but our specific sins. Yeah. So Joe, as, as we're wrapping up here, right? Yeah. Like what are some good books on evangelism that Purpose you Purpose Driven Life. Uh, on, on evangelism. Your best life now. All right, Joey. What are some good books on oh, evangelism? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you say good. Ah, I'm sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, all right. So, A Heart of Evangelism by Jerem Bars. That's a good one. I like that. Mm. recommend that. All of Jerem Bars' stuff is good. Maybe yeah. we'll get him on the podcast. We Ooh, that'd be nice. Podcast. That'd be good. Uh, um, you know what? Evangelism and the Sovereignty of God. You've mentioned Packer. that before, yeah. I, I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great, great book. There's some, there, Listen, there's a, there's a lot of good books out there. Um Ajith Fernando. Uh, I don't remember that. I, I read one of his books. I really liked it. I liked uh, the Art of Man Fishing. I'm going to say that one. I know you love that. Thomas one. Boston, yep. Art of Man Fishing. Sounds a little inappropriate today, <laughs> uh, but uh, but you know what he's saying, right? I'll make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really good book. Like that a lot. But actually, here's what you do: go to WT. They're not a sponsor, but go to WTS Books. That's Westminster Theological Seminary Books. Go to WTSBooks.com and just type in evangelism. There's going to be a ton mm. of really good resources there. Really good ones. You can trust right. most of those. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DoctrineAndDevotion.com. Wait. Yeah. That there, wasn't, I wasn't listening. I know, but I there you can my sign phone. Up, you can sign up for the email blast. You're supposed or to have this buttoned up. I know. Nailed down. That's right. You can hit up the store, JoeFoStore.com and grab some Is this some how you here. ran the meeting? No, I did oh, it better man, than this. Like, apparently. Hopefully. But if you want that ad-free, commercial-free content, exclusive, exclusive content, content yeah. you're going to want to sign up for Doctrine and Devotions All Access. Right there in your podcast player, you can click at the there, uh, at the bottom there, sub uh, subscribe or no, support this podcast, or you can go online to DoctrineDevotion.com slash All Access and sign up today. There, you're going to get your Banter Truth on Tuesdays, your weekday wisdom, Monday through Friday. Go ahead and head on over and sign up. Later. Later.